Greetings to you in the mighty name of Yeshua. So if you watched any clips or anything in the news, you will see that Red China has begin, begun to line up boats and they are deploying them and lining them up near the strip. I don't know about you, but let's just kind of cut to the chase. We have Russia, we have Palestinians, and the radical forces going against Israel, which puts them imminently in that battle. Um, and we also have Red China. Any scripture that we are in and that we have been reading since we have been in the Word of God, we'll see these are all contributing forces. It's one thing to know the signs and wonders that we will see in these last days, but it's even better to understand eyes that have the sight to see and hearts that are postured enough to understand that we are living in some not only perilous times, but closer endeavors to our soon and coming King. Um, what disheartens me is often people ask, well, when do you think it's going to be? And what we always do is add a little bit more time to what we think we may not have because, you know, we all want to occupy it till it comes, right? We want to do some things, see some things get done, see some people to come and know the Lord and maybe even have things fulfilled in us that we know there is to still be done and ministry and our life and our families, what have you. Irregardless, they're all good things, right? But I want to ask you a question. Let's go to the grass root where anything begins. And I want to challenge you today. I'm going to challenge myself. Are we doing the first two things? And these are the greatest of commandments. Are we, first of all, loving our Lord, our God, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength? Are we loving the Lord, our God? Number two is, are we loving our neighbor as ourself? A lot of people want to prophesy. A lot of people want to speak in tongues. A lot of people want to be an apostle. A lot of people want to do some fivefold ministry stuff, but we can't even love our neighbor. I wonder if the very thing that's stopping us from the things that we have ordained, predestined and clandestined for our life are the very things and the attributes that God took us back to the basics. And they aren't unachievable because he did it to the least of these. He did it to the ones who were, were, were called not good enough. They were people who were unlearned men. In the Greek, it basically says they're unlearned, unscripted, untaught kind of idiots. And it's not to be demoralizing or downgrading. What it is to do is to let you know that God will use any of us. Sometimes we're so learned that we get caught up in our orthodoxy, orthopraxy, all these things that we think is about positional religion and about the things that we think we must do according to what we understand that maybe God told us a thing or two to do when God deals with all people different, but there are delineating factors. And those factors are this, no matter who you are and what you've been called to, there is one thing that we've all been asked to do. And that's our foundational stuff. That is to love the Lord, our God, and that is to love our neighbor as ourself. Well, as we're approaching another um, presidential, you know, preliminaries, primaries, all these things coming up, you know, you're starting to see things happen. You're starting to see the economy. You're starting to see inflation. You're starting to see rates go up. You're starting to see, you know, in a post COVID era, you're starting to see a shift happen. And I believe the ones who are going to be lined up to successfully get through those things prayerfully, financially, and positionally are going to be the disruptors. They're going to be people who are able to stand on the stages of what God's called them to do. And as things are ultimately shifting and moving, they are going to be the ones who will not have their equilibrium off. What I mean by that is we have been used to doing ministry or doing things in life with a fixed stage. And things are shifting. Times are changing. We're getting closer. And the imminency of that is changing our concepts. They're changing our structure and they're forcefully allowing us to move into things that some will call it emergency mode. But if we truly know the Lord, it's not emergency mode. It is repositioning and realigning. And if we are a disruptor, we will be the ones who already have the foundational things correct. Now, let me, let me pivot here a little bit. When election comes up, we're going to start drawing boundaries. We're going to start saying, hey, I'm this, I'm that. I was raised this. I don't believe in all these things, so this makes me this. I don't believe in all this. This makes me this. And, you know, I'm going to use an acronym. And some of y'all are going to be like, 
hand claps. Some of you are going to be like, man, I, I'm going to turn this video off and that's fine. But a lot of us have heard that, that, that acronym MAGA and we know it to be make America great again. And I have a deep seated feeling in my heart that what that needs to mean is not a bipartisan left or right wing belief structure or independent, whatever all these derivatives and different channels are off of the Republican and Democrat stance that we've had for all these years. Regardless of what you think you are positionally, if you are loving your neighbor as yourself and loving the Lord God, you are not any party. You are for the things that are of the Lord. So I don't think it's about making America great again. We know these things are imminent that are coming up. I think what we have to do is make America God again. I hope that hits you today. Because as I was praying and kind of trying to get things reprioritized in my life, man, it's always about what's next, what's happening, what's going on, like, like, what do I need to do to make this happen? You can't do anything aside or apart from the Lord. So we need to start loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. The first commandment. Second one is to love our neighbor as ourselves. But they're a Republican. But they're a Democrat. But you know what? They're not really any of those. I don't even know their political belief, but what I do believe is I don't like them. I mean, they are arrogant. They're this, they're that. How, to, how can we take the church to people when we already shut them down because of the things that hang us up and so easily attain us within our mind and in our misconceptions that the fact that we cannot call anything that God makes unclean or unholy? I'm here today. I'm about to cut this off. And I just want to give you those two things. I knew I threw out some stuff. Some stuff was popping, was stirring in my spirit. Some things that I was just focusing on, on week one of three weeks of something that I'm doing. And the Lord's just, as he's speaking, there's distractions coming. There are things that are meant for good, but can be distractions if we give too much time to it. And what we need to understand is if we do Matthew 6, I believe I'm going to say this correctly. Seek ye first the things of God's heart. Seek ye first the things that elate God. Seek ye first the loving him first with all your heart, soul, and mind. He said, then I will add all these things unto you. Then the overflow will come. Then I will fill your horn with oil. Then I will start letting you speak to the things that are not as if they were. Then I will begin to have you prophesy straight on to things, speaking to the things that are not as if they were. I will begin to do a thing in your life. Matter of fact, he said, if you will just turn from me, and leave your wicked ways, I will heal your land. Question is, is America going to become about God again? Or is it going to become about our demigods? The things that we erected, our altars that we erected, and then we call it blessed and we invite him in to bless those things. Some of the things I think I've done in my life and that maybe we're doing, God's been nowhere in it. Yeah, there's an element of God in everything. But sometimes we get a little bit of too much of our dimminess in there and our little lowercase g kind of things. Now, I know I'm a G. Right? I don't know if you're a G, but I'm a G. But look, right, it's that little, little, little God, you know, factor in our life. We think that we got a little something and we think it's moving. But the moment we do that, we fall flat on our face. Let God reign supreme in your life today. Know that the Bible is about 99.8-ish percent fulfilled. We are less than, less than a tenth of a fraction away from him stepping in. Everything, even from Joel 2, I believe, where it said, in these last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your young men and um, young women will, will see visions. Your old men will have dreams. And I don't know about you, but I've been having dreams, dreams that wake me up and that are connecting things. I don't know exactly what's happened then, but it begins to unravel throughout my day and it begins to speak to things. And it's always not this grandeur thing that we're expecting. It's all about positioning us in the right places so that Holy Spirit will be sure that everyone knows about his saving grace and knowledge before he is imminently returning. Look, I love you in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe in you because I know you're here for a purpose. And according to Genesis, I believe 26, you were created in the image of him. A little lower than the angels, you were created. And according to Jeremiah 29, 11, you were created with a purpose and a promise. And I declare today that you will do a thing and that your latter, your later life will be greater than your former and your previous life. I declare that in the name of Jesus. And I bind up right now, and we're going to bind it here on earth that's just bound in heaven and loose here on earth what is loosed in heaven. We're going to declare 
declare and decree, not blab it and grab it. We are going to declare and decree that you were made for bigger things. Because if you're here, you have a purpose for at least one person to know the goodness that you believe in your life. Now, on the way out before I hit unrecord and we're, and we're done this, there are boats lining up. There are heinous actions happening again on that little five mile radius that the Lord said no one would ever be able to come against. Allies are rising up, people are coming in and positionally that have not come in and been positioned before. It, this is a new thing and a new time in the end days. And let me share something with you. There are boats lining up in your life. There are, there are, there are arch nemesis that are coming around. There are people who are trying to come in and create distraction. And if you don't listen and have your ear beckoning to what the spirit of the Lord is saying, we're going to miss our full potential and our purpose. I love you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray and declare these things over your life and let's love our neighbor as ourself and find a way to let them see Jesus in what we do. And secondly, let's do something. First of all, let's love the Lord with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. God bless you.